Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Okay. I'd like, to, I'd like to open the first keynote speech of the ICETC 2022. I am the chairperson of this session. My name is Hisaya Hadama. We have two keynote, session, keynote speakers in this session. Each presentation will be 45 minutes in length, including Q&A times. I'd like to take some questions after keynote speak, speak, speaker's presentation. If you are online, please type your question in the chat box on your Zoom account. I will read out them in the Q&A time. In this Ibuka hall, we can use the, that microphone. Please walk, walk over to the microphone and tell your question. Okay, now I would like to welcome the first keynote speaker, Dr. Takehiro Nakamura. Please proceed to the main stage. I'd like to introduce Dr. Takehiro Nakamura. He is chief technology architect in NTT Docomo. He has been contributing to standardization activities in 3GPP since 1999. Also, he has been the acting, acting chair, chairman of strategy and planning committee of 5G Mobile Communications Promotion Forum. His pre presentation is entitled 5G Evolution and 6G Powered by I.O. Dr. Nakamura, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much for your uh, kind of introduction. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for inviting me to this great event. And uh, I'm very honored to uh, provide my presentation here. And uh, uh, today, I would like to explain the, our views on the 5G evolution and the uh, 6G, especially uh, uh, ION is a concept on the uh, future uh, optical, advanced optical uh, based technology and power, so called. And then yeah, I'd like to provide my presentation as a title 5G evolution and the 6G powered by ION. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, this slide shows. Uh, uh, our expectation of the uh, schedule of the 60 standardization. And uh, it is uh, very good to see the 5G history. Upper part of this slide shows the history of the 5G. Actually, uh, we developed the 5G uh, for 10 years. I mean that uh, uh, from the 2010 around, we started uh, a study on the 5G and uh, 5G was commercialized in the uh, 2019 or uh, 20, as you may know. And uh, in the 5G case, the white paper or uh, project were, uh, uh, started around the 2013-14. Compared with the 5G history, the 6G schedule uh, is a very, very uh, ahead of the uh, to the 5G case. I mean, even uh, 5, 6G, 4, 6G, the project and the white paper has already uh, published and uh, studied uh, from the 2019 and 20. It means that uh, almost two or three years ahead of the 5G in the 6G case. So maybe uh, the, many of the people think that the 6G commercial timing will be a 2030 because the almost 10 year cycle, we uh, introduced a new generation system. But uh, considering that this kind of the situation, uh, very aggressive situation for the 60 study, there is a pos we think that, that there is a possibility that the uh, 60 commercial uh, services can will be started earlier than the 2030. But uh, at this moment, I, I don't know uh, what happened in, in the world. And uh, I don't want to rush to the uh, commercial timing of the 60 before the before the 2030, but uh, we need to see the global situation on the 6G deployment in the future. And also I want to say that, uh, yeah, we will have a very big event in the 2025, that is a, a World Expo in Osaka. And uh, this is a very good milestone and the timing 
events uh, because the, that is a, a completely uh, in between the 5G commercial timing and the potential 6G commercial timing. It is very good to show something on the uh, 6G potentials in the World Expo in the Osaka. So we are preparing the uh, some something on the pre 6G uh, to be uh, exhibit, exhibited in the World Expo in the uh, Osaka. So uh, maybe uh, not only NTT Group or NTT Docomo, maybe uh, many of the stakeholders uh, in the variety of the industries should collaborate to the to show something on the future. Yeah. Uh, through the uh, provided by the 6G systems. And the standardization, in any case, the, uh, our system for the 6G that will be standardized, need to be standardized uh, globally. And uh, normally we standard, uh, we develop the specification in the 3GBP and uh, that will be proposed to the ITU to develop the recommendations. And uh, in the ITU, uh, they has already uh, agreed on the uh, time schedule for the uh, 6C, so-called IMT 2030, as shown in the upper part. The requirement will be completed by the 2026 and the technology proposal deadline around 2028 and the ITR recommendation will be completed by mid 2030. That is agreed uh, time schedule in the ITU. In 3GPP, <coughs> uh, we have not had any uh, discussion on the 6C in the 3GPP. But the considering the ITU schedule, we think that it is better to start some kind of the requirement discussion from the 2024. And the technical discussion will start from the around the 2026. That is our guess. And uh, yes, even in this academia, uh, uh, with the academia people, the, uh, I really happy to uh, accelerate the technical discussion that can be uh, proposed to the 3 pp and that can be included in the 3 pp specification. We don't have a long time, actually. Maybe in any case, we will start the technical discussion from the 2026, maybe. If so, uh, we need to uh, have a clear idea on the te technologies to be included in the 3 6 specification uh, by the 2026. So it means that maybe uh, we will about two or three years uh, for that. And uh, this slide shows our concept on the 5G evolution and the 6G. Uh, in any case, the, the cyber physical system or cyber physical fusion, that's a very uh, exciting and uh, important concept and uh, systems uh, to be used for the future. And uh, in order to realize the cyber, very advanced cyber system, system the huge amount of data need to be transferred between the cyberspace and the physical space. Most of the data in the physical space need to be transferred to the uh, cyberspace and that those kinds of data need to be processed by AI and the processed data will be uh, actuated feedback to the physical space. So those kind of the very high speed circle need to be realized for the future. Uh, in order to do that, we need to provide a very high performance uh, telecommunication uh, system between the cyber cyberspace and the physical space. And uh, for that, we set the six kind of the requirement, as you can see in the uh, left side and the right hand side box. I will uh, provide my present uh, videos to explain the, those kind of requirement later. But in any case, uh, it is very important to realize that this kind of very high performance uh, communications, uh, not only the radio, but also the end-to-end -end manner to provide better services to the users. And uh, if so, uh, it is very important to consider the, uh, not only the improvement for the radio, but also the improvement for the wired line uh, need to be improved to uh, realize the end-to-end -end high performance. So uh, yeah, NTT Group uh, proposed the concept on the, uh, the na name of ION, uh, Innovative Optical and Wireless Network. And this is a future communication infrastructure based on leading edge optical technology and uh, information processing technologies to realize a smarter world. And uh, the uh, target or objectives uh, are very similar to the 6C. I mean, the very high capacity, high uh, low latency and uh, low energy uh, consumptions. So uh, this ION technology is very good to uh, combine 
with the, the radio technologies for the 5G evolution and 60, so that we can realize the very high performance end-to-end -end, uh, communication systems. After this, uh, I would like to show the videos to show the concept on the 5G evolution and the 60 powered by ION. 5G evolution and 6G. While 5G began commercial service in 2020, Docomo already has its eyes on the next decade and beyond. 5G evolution and 6G. These next generation communication technologies offering diverse value end to end will make six major breakthroughs. While advances in cyber physical fusion and green actions, such as reduced power consumption, will lead to the creation of new sustainable value. ION, in development by NTT with its global partners, will serve as the foundation for these innovative technologies. Let's see how this fusion of 5G evolution and 6G with ION will change our lives. Extreme high speed and high capacity communications. Integrating these features with ION's optical communication technologies will enable extreme high speed and high capacity communications exceeding 100 gigabytes per second. Extreme coverage extension. In the future, communications will be available everywhere through a space integrated computing network. Extreme low power consumption and cost reduction. ION's Photonics Electronics Convergence Technologies will be leveraged to introduce photonics-based technologies everywhere, from the network to devices. This will drastically reduce the power used by networks and computing, helping to make them carbon neutral. Extreme Low Latency ION's High Speed Transmission Technology, which minimizes communication overhead, will enable extreme low latency end-to-end. Extreme Reliable Communication ION's flexible optical network architecture will also enable extreme reliable communication. It will protect against such threats as theft and leakage of personal information, invasion of privacy, and disabling of government systems. Extreme Massive Connectivity and Sensing By using wireless and optical networks as a sensing infrastructure, Highly accurate sensing data will provide such things as radio wave-based object detection and location information accurate to within one centimeter for use in various applications. With 6G networks and ION's digital twin computing, cyber-physical fusion will develop and improve even faster. As cyberspace and the physical world fuse even more, extending human abilities beyond the limits of time and space will also be a possibility. 5G evolution and 6G and ION are working towards the same future. With 5G evolution and 6G powered by ION, we are fusing ION technologies with those of 5G evolution and 6G to further evolve the next generation of communication infrastructure that will offer diverse value end to end. Technologies that achieve well-being. 5G evolution and 6G powered by ION. Together, let's enter the future. Hey, thank you very much for your watching this video. Actually, uh, this video is a little the shorter version. And the uh, longer version has already uh, uh, uploaded on the YouTube. So uh, if you have any interest in this video, please uh, have a look on the, yeah, our longer version of the video on the YouTube. Okay, from here, I'd like to explain the technologies for the 5G evolution and the 6G. And uh, we talk more addressed uh, mainly uh, these kind of the four uh, areas of the technologies, uh, millimeter wave coverage Im improvement and the uh, coverage X expansion, telehealth, and uh, industry use cases. And uh, I'd like to explain some of them after this. First, millimeter wave coverage improvement. Yeah, actually a millimeter wave is alloca uh, allocated to the 5G and uh, the 5G is now uh, uh, using the millimeter wave. But uh, wh why I address 
this topic uh, toward the 60 because the millimeter wave is, will be very important not only for the five, not only for the 5G, but also even for the 60. And the details are, uh, are shown in the uh, in, on the slide. And uh, why millimeter wave needed? And the first, the guarantee guaranteed enough spectrum resources for future traffic increase. The traffic will be increased continuously and drastically. Uh, the data from the humans, data from the sinks. As I explained, uh, the many of the data from in the physical space need to be transferred to the uh, cyberspace. So uh, traffic will be increased uh, continuously even in the future. And the uh, existing spectrum band, especially for the mid band, low band, uh, it's not, it will not be enough uh, to treat those kind of huge amount of data. So a uh, millimeter wave if needed. And also uh, uh, left bottom, provide high data rate and the capacity for uh, spread of high quality 5G services, such as XL, video transmission and uh, robotics. So uh, we will have we will uh, develop the very, very uh, interesting services together with the uh, third party and uh, our partners. I, I'm sure that uh, uh, we will have a very advanced devices like Excel devices and so on in the future. So uh, those kind of the device will consume the huge amount of data. So, uh, and also uh, they need a very high data rates. So a millimeter wave could be uh, important for those kind of the new services in the future. And uh, right top, millimeter wave use for the uh, accurate sensing. And especially uh, in the 60 discussion, the, including the academia uh, people, joint communications and the sensing is one of the very interesting topic. And the millimeter wave can be useful to have a very accurate sensing. Yes, thanks to the wider spec uh, spectrum band with us. And the uh, right bottom, an initial accomplishment that opened the way for millimeter wave and the sub health development in 60 era. And uh, yeah, we are now addressing on the further higher uh, spectrum band uh, sub health for the 60. Uh, but uh, uh, not only for the sub health, the we uh, are very interested in the additional spectrum resources on the uh, millimeter wave to be allocated to the mobile mobile communications. So uh, it is very good to uh, spread the millimeter wave in the 5G era. And then maybe we will, we can use more uh, spectrum resources very efficiently uh, on the millimeter wave and uh, sub health in the future. And the uh, characteristics of the millimeter wave and the sub health. They, this is a very common understanding. Uh, most of the people know that, uh, yeah. Uh, Millimeter wave, higher spectrum band uh, has a good characteristic in terms of the widest frequency band widths that can um, realize the higher data rate and the capacity. This is good. And the considering the uh, conventional system of the on the uh, ratio between the center frequency and the frequency band widths, maybe we can consider for the 60 that the four to eight gigahertz spectrum band widths can be used from technical point of view, yes, at the sub health level, like a 100 gigahertz spec frequency band, wide, very wide spectrum bandwidth. And also uh, this wider frequency bandwidth is very good for the uh, sensing accuracy also, as I mentioned. But on the other hand, as you know, the higher propagation loss and the blockage loss, this is a bad uh, characteristics. And, uh, and then we need to uh, use a millimeter wave in the smaller cell size, yes. But considering that these kind of characteristics, we can uh, we can consider that this kind of the deployment scenario. In any case, the, we will use the spectrum resources, the case by case basis. And uh, for the millimeter wave, especially uh, considering the uh, millimeter wave characteristics, we think that we should deploy the millimeter wave in the smaller and the closed area. Uh, we had a higher performance requirement, uh, for example, the hotspots, stadium, uh, and uh, event venues, and also an uh, indoor office, private network, local 5G area, and the uh, macro street area. And uh, we will start, we should start the uh, millimeter wave deployment in this kind of the uh, 
dedicated area. But uh, of course, we should extend, expand the millimeter wave coverage according to the uh, spread of the millimeter wave devices and the increase in the need for the higher performance. And uh, we are now considering the sub health for the 60. This slide showed our image of the deployment of the millimeter wave and the sub health. In the 5G era in 2020s, yes, as I mentioned, the millimeter wave will be uh, used in the uh, closed and uh, dedicated area uh, with the very high performance. But we should expand the millimeter wave coverage as much as possible according to the spread of the uh, devices and uh, needs. And in the future, in the 2030s, in 6G era, we will uh, add the sub health resources on top of the millimeter wave like this. And uh, maybe uh, we should focus on the, yes, uh, uh, dedicated area, a small area, uh, similar to the millimeter wave deployment in the 2020s. And um, on the other hand, we can achieve the very high performance with the sub health thanks to the very wide spectrum bandwidth. And also, uh, uh, in order to deploy the millimeter wave or sub health in the future, yeah, of course, uh, uh, we, sh we should uh, set the antennas as much as possible everywhere, but uh, uh, we have to pay much money from the operator point of view. It is not so good, actually. But so uh, we should better to consider the additional approach, uh, which has uh, uh, features like this, smaller size and lightweight, cost and energy efficient and uh, easy and uh, ready to use and uh, inconspicuous. And uh, this kind of, if we can have a good solutions, uh, which has uh, this kind of the features, that those kinds of solutions can be used even for the sub health in the future. And uh, we are uh, addressing, studying the, this kind of the solutions as uh, uh, new uh, solutions uh, in addition to the conventional approach using the conventional antenna system of the millimeter wave. And uh, yeah, antenna technologies like on glass antenna and the pinching antenna, I will explain later. And uh, this is a very good in terms of the inconspicuous, conspicuous and the easy and the ready to use. And the radio X hole, and uh, we are studying the radio fiber. This is very good in terms of the cost and the energy efficient. And also uh, uh, OM MIMO multiplexing. This can achieve the very high speed and, and uh, this can be used for the uh, wireless back hole front hole. And also radio repeater technologies, Yes, repeater systems. And also uh, now the RIS, uh, reflectors, a very interesting topic, uh, even in the yeah, academias and uh, our industries. And also uh, we developed the meta surface lens. This is also very interesting uh, devices. I will show some something about the uh, result of the, our experiments. And first, this is a meta surface lens. And uh, this is lens for the radio. And uh, this is just a film that can be attached, covered on the uh, glass, the windows. And uh, this uh, film can uh, focus on the radio signal into the focal point. And uh, that gain is, uh, the, we conducted this very simple uh, ex experiment like this, and uh, we achieved uh, more than 24 dB. But this is a very, very uh, simple and fundamental, uh, basic uh, experiment. And uh, in, uh, this is uh, our image of the use cases of the metasurface lens. And uh, if we attach the, this metasurface lens film on the window, the radio signal can be focused on the uh, single point. If we can set the uh, focal point on the roof of the uh, room, room, and uh, if we can set the repeater amplifier on the roof at the focal point. And the uh, repeater can trans, uh, amplify and uh, retransmit the signal into the, the uh, into a room like this so that uh, we can improve the uh, radio conditions and the environments uh, very drastically like this. And uh, we conducted the trials like this and uh, in the real uh, realistic environments. And uh, we use the 28 uh, gigahertz uh, base station antennas. And uh, this base station antennas are set outside the conference room. And the uh, entrance, at the entrance of the conference room, we set the window, yes, saw the window. 
and uh, and then we uh, measured the uh, uh, radio quality inside the conference room. Yes. This is the results, and uh, as you can see, the the left side we show I show the uh, heat map. Upper part of the heat map. Uh, this is uh, without the lens and uh, without the repeater. Nothing, just a window. In that case, the radio signals uh, are transferred into the uh, conference room, uh, very straight beam beam like uh, conditions. So uh, uh, radio conditions uh, sub areas cannot be expanded in the conference room, as you can see on the top of the heat map, and the um, uh, middle uh, heat map shows the without lens, but uh, with repeater only using the repeater. The re thanks to the repeater amplifier uh, gain, uh, we can have some kind of gain in terms of the coverage area, as you can see. And the bottom, this is the with lens and the with repeater. And uh, we can improve the uh, radio coverage uh, very well like this. And the uh, right-hand side graph shows a uh, uh, CDF of the uh, RSRP, radio signal strength. And uh, we see that uh, around the 10 dB gain, we can achieve with the lens and the repeater, combination of the lens and the repeater. And also this is another uh, approach. And this is a, a so-called RIS reflector. But, and uh, this is a very uh, dynamic reflector. Uh, this reflector can control the uh, reflection angle according to the movement of the mobile devices. And the uh, mobile location of the mobile devices uh, are measured by the uh some other way yes and uh, and that information uh, is transferred to the uh, reflector and then the reflector can control the direction uh, of the uh, reflected beam and uh, yes result is like this and the uh, upper part is uh, without reflector and uh, we transmit the radio signal from base station the base station antenna was set in the left side hand side and uh, through the 20 meters uh, length corridor, uh, radios are transferred. And uh, uh, we measure the uh, radio signal strengths and uh, mobile, mobile devices are moving uh, like this on this uh, way. And the uh, ROS area, line of sight area, of course, the level, uh, receipt level is very high, but the non-line of sight areas are uh, almost zero. No area coverage, of course. And the uh, bottom side, this is a with uh, controlled RIS reflector. And the reflector was set at the, uh, on the wall, yes, on the right-hand side. And the uh, radio signals uh, from uh, transferred from the base station from the left-hand side. And the uh, reflectors uh, can, trans, uh, can reflect the radio signal uh, properly according to the uh, tracking the uh, location of the mobile devices. And as you can see, the uh, non line of sight area uh, radio conditions are drastically improved. And almost uh, up to 20 dB gain we identified with this experiment. So uh, yeah, this kind of the RIS the approach is very good uh, to improve the area coverage inside the room. And also uh, this is another way and the direct electric waveguide. And the uh, higher spectrum band, like a millimeter wave, and uh, even for the sub terahertz, the uh, propagation loss is very high, as you know. But not, not, that is not only for the uh, AI interface, uh, but also the inside in the cable. And uh, we are now using the metal cable, uh, copper cable, and for the other RF cable. And the loss of the RF cable is, uh, will be very high for the high spectra band, but like a millimeter wave. And uh, we are now uh, interested in the, this uh, directory waveguide. This is made of the uh, PTFE, poly, polytetrafluoroethylene. Yes, yes. And uh, this is a very uh, usual devices and uh, uh, materials. And this material can transfer the radio signal uh, with a lower loss compared with a metal cable, com conventional metal cable. And the uh, thickness can be, uh, as can be seen for the thinner 
for the higher spectrum band. That is uh, fully uh, proportional uh, with the uh, wavelengths. So, uh, so for the higher spectrum band, maybe uh, this cable can treat very easily thanks to the thin thickness. thickness. And uh, also uh, this uh, waveguide has a very interesting characteristic. If by attaching the small pieces of the plastic on the direct dielectric waveguide, radio waves leaks from the attached point. And uh, we think that uh, this phenomenon can be used as an antenna. So uh, we uh, use this kind of characteristics and uh, uh, we had the idea that uh, we can use this uh, as an antenna. So, so uh, we called it in the pinching antenna or a dropping prop antenna. And the uh, use case of this antenna is, uh, yeah, for example, the well, where the uh, people and the things move frequently and uh, stable 5G, 6G services with line of sight environment can be maintained by changing the attached point. Maybe it is very important to keep the line of sight condition for the millimeter wave and the subtle health. In order to do that, then the transmission point should be changed very flexibly. So uh, this pinching antenna or dropping prop antenna is very good that this antenna transmission point can, can change very, very easy. Yes. So uh, for example, the construction area or exhibition hall office and the cabin, the things or uh, people moved anytime. In that case, the transmission point, in order to keep the line of sight conditions, the transmission point need to be changed very easily and flexibly. So this antenna uh, idea is very good. And this is a, a video of the, our demonstration. And the white line is a, a dielectric waveguide and that box is just antenna. The small piece of the plastics are, are attached in the bottom of this box. And if bo this box uh, removed and the radio stopped and uh, the video cannot be transferred and put that box on the waveguide, yes, video transferred again. So uh, as you can see, the, the position of the antenna can be changed very easily. And uh, yeah, so uh, this could be a, maybe a potentially good idea to provide a, uh, to keep the line of type conditions very easily. Yes. Okay, so from next, uh, time is running and the uh, technologies for the coverage extension. From here, I'd like to talk about drastic coverage extension. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe, okay. Maybe uh, I need to click. Sorry. And uh, yeah, we are now very interested in the non-terrestrial net terrestrial network. In order to extend the coverage uh, drastically, or the mountainside, on the on the sea, or uh, in the sky, and even in the space, we cannot use the conventional approach by the using the terrestrial network. So, uh, uh, in order to extend the coverage to the sea, mountain, terrestrial, non-terrestrial terrestrial network, we are very useful. And uh, non-terrestrial network, we can consider the three kinds of the uh, approach: the zero satellite, and the low leo satellite, and the uh, HAPS. And uh, each solution has a uh, unique characteristic in terms of the coverage and the performance. So uh, we will use the, uh, this kind of solution case by case basis. And especially HAPS, the HAPS is a, a system uh, using the aircraft in the stratosphere. And the distance is just a only the 20 kilometers, very short compared with the satellite uh, solutions. So uh, thanks to the shorter distance, we can uh, provide a very high data rate and a very low latency, high performance. Uh, so uh, we can consider the variety of the use cases like this, not only the disaster case, but also the, some kind of the uh, construction site case and uh, uh, event uh, case or yeah, ships, aircraft, everything. And we started some kind of the activities, yes. And uh, we are collaborating with Airbus and uh, Airbus has already developing the uh, aircraft, uh, so-called Zephyr, uh, that can fly on the stratosphere. 
and uh, for, uh, for a long time, like uh, several months or uh, potentially years. And uh, also uh, uh, NDT, our parents' company, and uh, Skype Architect JSAT established a uh, uh, venture company, the Space Compass, to accelerate the uh, develop, development of the HAP system and uh, uh, some kind of so solution in the space. And uh, we will uh, accelerate the development of the HAP system uh, with the Space Compass. And this is an image for the uh, HAPS direct access. I mean that uh, we are aiming to realize a direct access. It means that the radio signal from the HAPS from, from the sky can be, can be reached to your smartphone. And uh, your smartphone can receive the radio signal uh, similar to the uh, terrestrial, ne terrestrial network systems. And uh, uh, we don't want to have a drastic changes in, the, in our existing network. And uh, our gate, new hub system will be connected to the existing base stations and uh, through the gateway station on the ground. And the uh, hubs uh, will uh, implement uh, uh, repeater like uh, our communication equipment and a very simple, simple one. And then the radio signal from the uh, ground uh, gateway station should be uh, transferred. Uh, changing the frequency band to the, your uh, smartphone so that uh, your smartphone can be used uh, for the hub system everywhere. Yeah, that is our concept. Mm -hmm. And uh, we developed a simulator, but the time is running. So, uh, and uh, yeah, we developed uh, this kind of simulator to uh, know the potential performance of the uh, hub system. We need to uh, control the interference between the ter terrestrial network and the non-terrestrial network, those kind, those, those kind of the functions are implemented in the simulator. And uh, we uh, 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 verify the potential uh, performance of the uh, hub system like this. Yes, I, I will skip the details sorry for that. And the frequency, higher spectrum band. And uh, yes, the, in order to uh, meet a very high, perf high performance requirement for the 60, that we should have uh, additional spectrum resources, uh, in, even in the millimeter way, and also a much higher spectrum band, like a sub terahertz. But maybe a terahertz, one terahertz or two terahertz, such kind of spectrum bands are very, very challenging, challenging to use for the mobile communication system. So uh, for the moment, we set uh, uh, our target uh, of the sub terahertz spectrum band up to 300 gigahertz, yes or the 60. And uh, also I uh, wish better to uh, expect or uh, assumptions on the new spectrum band to be used for the 60. This is our current uh, thinking. Maybe a candidate of the new frequency band for the 60 should be uh, 7.125 to 24 gigahertz. Maybe this could be a high data rate and the capacity with a certain level of coverage. And also uh, sub terahertz, 92 to 300 gigahertz. This is the super data rate and the capacity at the local area. And uh, of course, the spectrum discussion, uh, frequency discussion is uh, very tough. And uh, many of the industries are using the spectrum radio, radio resources. And even in the, uh, this kind of the candidates, the, uh, already uh, some industry use the, this kind of spectrum band portion by portion. So uh, we need to negotiate with the variety of the industries to allocate the new frequency band for the mobile, mobile communication system. That will be a very tough negotiation, but we need to start the negotiations, yes. And uh, also uh, we have uh, many challenges to, to use the sub health uh, in terms of the uh, technical point of view. Uh, of course, the uh, radio propagation need to be uh, addressed. We should uh, measure the propagation. Uh, propagations of the sub health and the RF devices. We don't have a good RF devices for the sub health, uh, which can be used for the mobile uh, devices and uh, our base station antennas. And uh, that need to be a uh, uh, lower power consumption, the uh, uh, lower heat uh, and, and so on. So uh, that will be challenging, but uh, uh, we are now starting the, some kind of activities. And uh, we need to address 
on their new technologies in terms of the modulation, demodulation, and the AI interface technologies, uh, which can suit for their subtle health, very high frequency band. We need to address. So uh, uh, I really like would like to collaborate with uh, uh, people uh, here to address on the, this kind of the technologies and the challenges, yes, uh, toward the 60 standardization. We started some kind of activities like this, but I would like to skip and uh, yeah. In any case, the some activities need to be started with the vendors and also hope here, uh, I would like to collaborate with academia people. And uh, we developed uh, some uh, simulations, simulators like this, and this is a factory case. And uh, even in the very high spectrum band, like a 100 gigahertz spectrum bands. And uh, uh, I, we would like to know that those kind of spectrum bands can be really used in the uh, real situation. And we developed a simulator like this. This is a factory case. And in this measure, uh, uh, we are uh, using the eight gigahertz spectrum band with us, frequency band with us, very wide. And uh, we see that we can achieve the very high spec data rate. The details are like this. And uh, yeah, this is a ratio of the uh, achieved data rate in the in the factory the, we we deployed many kinds of the devices in the factory in the simulator and as a result of the simulations the in the 60 using the 100 gigahertz spectrum center frequency and the 8 8 gigahertz spectrum band with us the many of the uh, terminals are uh, experienced 50 to 100 giga bps yellow part and uh, Around the thirty percent of the devices achieved uh, uh, more than one hundred gigabps, very high. And uh, if we increase the numbers of, of the base station, the uh, red part over one hundred gigabps uh, portion is a uh, wider. Yes, it means that the much higher spec uh, data rate can be achieved, and and so on. So uh, yeah, this kind of the simulation can be done using our simulator. And finally, uh, application, uh, it's time. So uh, shortly, uh, we, for the future, we really, our network can be uh, improved in terms of the performance, data rate and the low latency. If so, uh, our network can be used as a human nerves. And if so, uh, we can extend, we can augment human capabilities through the network so that uh, we can uh, behave uh, without any limitation of the distance and the time, thanks to the network. If so, uh, we can achieve the uh, science fiction world, like a telepathy or te telekinesis, if we can treat the brain signals in the network, yes. And uh, we developed a human augmentation platform, and uh, this is uh, some demonstration. This is a simple demonstration. And uh, this is uh, using the muscle signal, yes, muscle signal. And uh, white band, uh, that is the sensor, left-hand side guides. Left-hand side guides are uh, on motion, can be transferred to the robot very precisely, uh, thanks to the, this very simple device. And this, by the platform, uh, the sensing data from the person can be changed, reproduced for the robot. Yes. And uh, this is a human to robot, and uh, this is a human to human. And uh, yes, left-hand side uh, guides are motion, can be transferred to the left-hand side guides, yes, like this. We are not cheating, <laughs> and uh, yeah. This is a very similar uh, technology, it's like a six part, yes. But uh, in any case, the left-hand side people, right-hand side people, the muscle structure is different. So uh, our platform can change the data uh, for the right left-hand side people by the cal calculations. Yes. And also, uh, so far we show the one-to-one -one communication, but this is the one to multiple and the left top guides on motion. It's transferred to the three kinds of object, uh, human, person, robot, and the avatar uh, in the virtual, <laughs> virtual world. And uh, yeah, this could be uh, good for the, uh, some kind of improvement of the work style for the future. And uh, this kind of the uh, tool, uh, how to use it? What's a use case? 
This is one of the example, lesson for the uh, inst instruments. Yes, the normally uh, a lesson for the instrument like a piano or keyboard. This is uh, uh, by the oral lesson or just a image lesson, but the muscle lesson can be achieved here things. So uh, for the future, we will uh, treat a more complicated and the combination of the many kinds of sensing, including emotions and the sensations for the future so that we can create a very nice uh, services in the future in the 60 era. Okay, that's my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Dr. Nakamura, for your presentation, for your very interesting talk. Uh, now, uh, time is almost up, but sorry, I want to have uh, uh, some short comment or question. Are there any questions? Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I would like to finish okay. the first speaker's speech. Thank you very much.